Hi everyone, I'm Julie and welcome back to my story time. For this week's book, I chose a book that I've had for almost 30 years. It was written in 1993 and it is one of my favorites and I love it because it gives us a little taste about Texas and it's entitled Alamo Across Texas. This book is written and illustrated by Jill Stover. And I want to read to you and the back cover about what they say from the author because it gives us an introduction as to why she decided to write this book. So I'll read this to you. Jill Stover's childhood memories of South Texas provided the inspiration for this story. And she writes, it strikes me now that my childhood environment was rather exotic. The landscape and the creatures were so different from those most people experience. In my own family alone, we kept a sheep, a raccoon, turtles, a small alligator, a jackrabbit, a pony, and a horse, to say nothing of all the dogs and cats we had about. So her life growing up in South Texas inspired her to write this book. So let's read it together. Alamo Across Texas. Who do you think Alamo is? Maybe the alligator? Look at this page. That seems to be common. Find out what happens. On the La Vaca River in the great state of Texas, there once lived an alligator named Alamo. Life along the river suited Alamo perfectly. He had plenty of water, lots of tasty fishes, a fine shade tree, and an interesting assortment of friends and neighbors. Look at all of those different neighbors he has. Can you name some of those animals? Maybe all of them? But one year there came a drought. Day after day, the sun beat down until there was no more water, no more tasty fishes, no more shade tree. Do you know what a drought is? A drought is when there's not enough rain to keep everything, to keep the rivers filled up with water and keep the shade tree growing. and no more friends and neighbors. Life along the river was no longer pleasant at all. So Alamo set off down the trail to find a new home. Everybody's gone searching for a place where there's more water. He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked. until he came to a Texas ranch. The ranch had water. Look at that. Hmm. But no tasty fishes and his neighbors were too curious. So Alamo hit the trail again. He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked until he came to the ocean. There were lots of tasty fishes. <laughs> lots of fish jumping out of the ocean. But the water was rough and far too salty. Oh, so Alamo hit the trail again. 
He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked until he came to a swimming pool. The pool was full of water. Do you think there'll be a problem with the pool? Oh. Hmm. But there were no tasty fish and it was far too crowded. So Alamo hit the trail again. He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked. Whoa, lots of horses that he's passing. Until he came to a city. What does that look like? Where did he find water? In a fountain, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the city had water and fishes. Do you see those fish? Little tiny fish. But, oops, sorry about that. But what a racket. It didn't smell too good either. It was very noisy, isn't it, with all the cars? So Alamo hit the trail again. He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked. Do you see him leaving the city? And he walked and he walked. But there was no more water to be found in the whole state of Texas. At the end of the trail, exhausted and dry as a bone, Alamo curled up under a cactus and fell asleep. What do you think is going to happen? Do you have an idea? And while Alamo slept, it began to rain. And it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained. Fast asleep, Alamo drifted. <laughs> and drifted. And in the morning, when he awoke, he could hardly believe his eyes. Um, the drought ended and he went home again. He was with all of his neighbors and in the water with tasty fishes. So wonderful. I like reading stories that teach us a little bit about the environment that we live in and the creativity that God had when he created the world and how every parts of our country and every parts of our world look a little bit different. And what a wonderful way to go exploring. And even if we can't go to South Texas right now, we certainly can read about it in a book. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.